Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi, Joel. Hello. We have a new release, 116. And as usual, I have a new presentation of what's new in Playwright. Ready? Yeah. Awesome. As, as, as usual, I have not seen this presentation, and I'm going to try to ask yes. difficult questions. Yes. So as usual, uh, if you don't know what Playwright is, please head over to our documentation at playwright.dev. If you like what we do, we are available on Twitter. Please follow us on Twitter. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and give us a star on uh, GitHub. We will surely appreciate it. So this time we have a little bit of agenda. So let's jump right in to the first big topic, which is API testing. So we already talked about API testing in the previous release in 1.15. This time, however, this feature is out of experimental. It used to be experimental. Well, it's stable now. And there are actually three big use cases I want to highlight in this presentation, which is a pure API testing, a mix of API and end-to-end -end testing, and response interception. So I think we've already saw the response interception before, but the other ones are actually cool demos I have. So I want to show them. OK, first one is pure API testing. OK, great. So this is so pure API testing. We're just doing a, an HTTP request, right? This is. You said it's no yes. fetch. This is fetch in the browser. Um, okay, so I'm just I'm just requesting this uh, this this URL that's gonna start my database. For example, or like in, okay. in the demo, I'll show you some different use cases. For example, okay, I'll okay. Sure so, that... so like so like my REST API. That's where that's where API yes. comes from. Okay, like REST, REST API, API. Or HTTP API. Yeah, whatever. Yes. Okay, so we will use the GitHub API. And this will be a file where I will do my tests for GitHub API. And I will use this top-level test.use to pre-configure all my tests here to work with GitHub API. Turns out I will just use this base URL so that I don't have to have all the full URLs in every test. Mm -hmm. And this is just you know API tests against this Octocat repository. Mm -hmm. And uh, GitHub wants me to put some extra HTTP headers to each of the requests I do which is this fancy accept header and my authorization token. Mm -hmm. So far, all clear. Yeah. Now comes my test. Now, in this test, I have this magic request fixture, which is a new thing since this release. It's mm -hmm. built in. And if you use just request, it doesn't launch any browsers. Because I don't use you know, page, there is no reason to launch a browser. So it's really fast to start. And with this request, I can just go and issue requests. Like here, for example, I do a post request to this uh, issues endpoint. And since it's a, it's a post request, it will create a new issue with this title and with this body. Oh, so you're you're creating inside your test right now. You're adding new bugs to our to, to uh, someone I was going to say our repo, repo yes. but it looks like the Octocat repo. Octocat you're repo. Fi yes. You're filing a bug inside your test report. Yes. Okay. Exactly. So, so, so our users should probably use a, a test server or something instead of doing yes. this on production. Yes. Yes. So this is just for demonstration <laughs> purposes. Don't do this. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But obviously, I don't think your API token will let you do this. Whatever. So. Yes. Well, but the I important mean, thing for here, GitHub, it won't let you do it. But I'm saying on people's website, right? Like. Yes. 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 That's for sure. Yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, request.post returns your response, and uh, you can you know assert different things on response, things like headers, status code, and stuff that you would expect from a response. Can I get the JSON? Oh yes, you can do everything. You can get everything. Okay. We will see it later in some of the demos. Okay. okay, so this was just a pure API test, really easy, super fast, works like a charm. You don't need any more dependencies to do this now. Next one is this. Uh, mix of API testing and end-to-end -end tests. And the idea here is that I can actually use API testing API to log in to my uh, websites, for example, or to set up some preconditions. Mm -hmm. So here I have this test. It has this page fixture. So it will launch a browser. It will give me a page from this browser. And the very first thing here I do is I'm using this page.request.post. And mm -hmm. this issues a request on behalf of the page. This is like a node page, but bound oh. to the page. So all the cookies are shared. 
Okay. So, so how is this different from me um, doing like page out evaluate and inside that doing a fetch? Oh, so wait, this is actually, you can do this as well. <laughs> okay. I think you can do this. You can do this. Yes. 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 But okay. uh, if you have some course related things, like if you want to do a mm -hmm. fetch request to different origin, for example, fetch will not, will have a course blocked for you because it's a browser request. This thing mm -hmm. uh, bypasses all the course. This, well, this I, is not I, the case I, I, for the hacking news. Oh, well, I would hope that Y Combinator would uh, make it so you can't log in with, without the with course header. Yeah. Right, because otherwise oh, yeah. people could fetch on other sites or something. Right? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. But actually, we, uh, so we have page request and we have context request. Mm -hmm. And yeah, after that, I can just navigate to this page, can navigate to the Hacker News and make sure that it's actually me. And the page will be logged in after this. Uh, oh, you haven't even went to, you didn't go to Hacker News yet. Yeah, right? yeah, I didn't go to yeah, Hacker yeah. News. Yeah, right. Otherwise, if I was doing it with Fetch, I would have to go to Hacker News First, and then go to Hacker News, then do evaluate. Then, which is ugly. And then Fetch and then reload. And then, re yes. and then reload. Right? Yes, this, yes. We, just, this... we just log in and we go. Yes, we just log in and we go. Okay. Exactly. Hmm. Awesome. So, last demo here is the response interception. And it turns out that you can combine both request interception and API, testing API, to have a response interception. And we actually had this demo already last time. I would just want to stop one more time on it to, re, to show in details what's going on, because we had so many questions about it. So this is just a very simple test. It navigates to my homepage, makes sure the navigation succeeded. And I have this unused import of an image processing library. I will use it later on. Okay. So what the test does, I, I will set up a request interception here. And now this line is the good stuff. And this is where I want to actually pause a little. Wait, can, it, can we pause even before that? Can you go? Sure. Yeah. Can you talk about what request interception is doing? Oh, yes. Request interception is a simple thing. So we get all the requests that are coming, f coming from the page. And we intercept them, and we don't let them to go further. So after that, we can manipulate with them. We can abort them. We can fulfill them. We can continue them to the server. This is uh, like, uh, here's the page, uh, here's server, and in between, we have Playwright that intercepts all yeah. the traffic flowing from the page to the server. Yeah, th this has been like core Playwright functionality since uh, yeah. since the beginning. Since one, since the very yeah, first since version, before yes. one, which we're not going to talk yes. about, right? Um, and yes. so. Yeah, so 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 this lets you block requests, and you could you could always say, oh, the it's like a service worker, right? Like the page says, exactly. I want uh, foo.jpg, and you could return your own foo.jpg. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes, and this page route will set up a request interception, so I will give a callback, and this callback will be called each time a page is trying to load an image. Yeah, JPEG image, and now here I will reissue this this is the magic line <laughs> yes. it has three parts and uh -huh. the first part is this request that i just intercepted right this is the image request okay. that the page was sending okay and so we're it's fetching it. request yes it feels like we it are... would we would immediately stall because we would hit ourselves again right well it's uh, not the case yeah, it's smarter uh, than testing that. api okay. is smarter than that yes, yes. okay so, so testing actually... api doesn't doesn't get intercepted again yes exactly okay Yes, but I can use the intercepted request as a body to, to reissue it on behalf of a page using the testing API. And then as a result, I get this response on the Node.js side. Okay, so this is like the request with all the same cookies, all the same headers, all the same, yes. you know, accept type, whatever. So Everything. we're going to get exactly the image that would have went to the, the uh, browser and the to page. The browser. But we we caught it and we're manipulating it in Node right now. Exactly, yeah. And uh, we can actually get the body of this image and we can use this GIMP library to blur it. Okay. And then we can fulfill. And this is actually an important part as well. Mm -hmm. I can use this response from the fetch API, from the testing API request, as a as a you know as a body. Not the body, it's the general fulfill part. And then I can override the body with my blurred image. 
Right. So I remember this now from headers. last time. Yes. 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 Exactly. Yes. And and are you going to show the image? Oh yes. Yes. It, okay. It's weird, as you would expect. Uh, yes. So so the problem with your demo is that uh, the the GIMP library seems so much cooler than the response interception. So you know. <laughs> We're this advertising the wrong thing, but and, and cool. also, well, and I also remember from last time the reason why those other images are not blurred is because their SVG is not JPEGs, right? Exactly. Yes. 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 Because it's it. Exactly. Otherwise, people might think that page route only gets like the first image or something, and that's not true. Yeah, it no, gets it, all of them. It, it gets all of them. Yes. Awesome. So API testing uh, bypasses course, like we mentioned already, manages all the cookies if you do requests on behalf of a page or a context and follows all uh, redirects. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Next thing, HTML reporter. And this I have actually a demo. So I want to stop share and I want to share my screen. Uh, I have this repo. And this is our usual uh, playwright test. I can run my tests here. Mm -hmm. And I have a screenshot here that is supposed to, oh, wait, I have to say reporter equals HTML. Mm -hmm. OK, so now there is a failing test. So HTML reporter got opened right away. Mm -hmm. And I can see that my test is failing. Mm -hmm. As I go in it, I can see that there is a snapshot comparison failed. And I have this image mismatch here. I have this actual expected, and I can even see the difference. Well, something is different here. Oh, the installation is green instead of uh, white. Yeah, well, some styles are, should be messed up probably. Mm -hmm. And down here, I was actually recording a trace mm -hmm. for this test run. So now I have this trace attachment here, and I can click it. And as I do so, it opens a trace viewer for me right away, right here in the browser. Oh, just right in the browser. Yeah, yeah. And I have all the good stuff here with all the trace network requests and everything. It's console events and calls. Like hold all hold the on, you're usual... going you're going too fast. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Go 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 back. Let me now that I know what I'm gonna see. Let's go back. So um okay, so go back one more. One more. Okay. One more. Okay. So let me let me try to repeat. You tell me again. So you have this test that's failing. Yes. It opened up this nice, beautiful HTML report. Yes. Um, I click it. Yes. And then I see the error message, and it says that the screenshot did not match the stored screenshot. Exactly. Here is. And we can so. see yeah. that all of these steps passed. It says page go to, locator yeah. click. All these things worked. And it successfully took the screenshot, but it didn't match. And so what yes. happens if you expand that expect to match snapshot? Oh, it'll say, oh, it'll just show, show the you line. the snippet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, and we can go look. Okay. And then it's showing us this is from the, the snapshot that failed. This is the yes. diff, and we can see that the color of that text installation is, is different. Yeah, on the diff. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and and I can click these things. I can download those. Uh, yeah, you can actual... download them. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. So if you just click that, oh, you can just right. You, you can I can see comment it. click that. It's so a the it's a web browser, there. right? We can yes, yes, it's a web browser. Okay, and then you're saying if I still don't know what's going on, if it's still having trouble, I can click this trace. Yes. Okay. Exactly. And this, and this also shows here. me the steps before. Right, these are the same steps I saw before that had the little green check marks next to them. Yep, yep. Right, but now we have screenshots of what's on page. Oh, and we have a yeah. We have a screencast so, here. Yeah, we have a screenshot. And we can see where we clicked. There is a red dot yeah. here, and you can see the network. Okay, I'm I'm sold. Yeah, awesome. I need to stop sharing now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this was the HTML reporter. And we have one last thing to talk about, which is this was the demo. And the final locator wait for. And locator wait for is just a sugar for page wait for selector. Not a sugar, but the same thing basically. Mm -hmm. So say for example, you want to navigate a certain website mm -hmm. and you want to make sure that it loads before taking a screenshot. Uh, before 116, I had to use wait page.wait for selector 
But now you can do the same thing with locators and everyone loves locators. Locators are awesome for your page object models and everything. So now you can just have a locator and say locator, wait for state visible. And there are the same states as in wait for selector. You can wait for a state to be attached, detached, visible, or hidden. And hidden is uh, a lowercase, right? Yes, hidden is lowercase. This is my other complete. <laughs> yes. And uh, if you don't pass any arguments, it defaults to state visible. Cool. So yeah, this is the thing. Mm -hmm. That's it. Uh, so in this release, we have new API testing that's out of experimental. Please use it. It's awesome. We have an HTML reporter and we have locator wait for. So this cool. is for today. When, Thank you, Joel. When's the next one? Uh, in a month. One month, one release. In a month. In a month. Okay. Yeah. Probably, right? Probably a month. Probably a month. Yes. Even less, maybe. Okay. Adios. Thank you. Right.